Hey everybody, Charlie Runner 2 here, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. When we last left off, we were trying to, uh, well, to talk to the nightclub, future nightclub owners here, about trying to get set up in this church. We have one more person that we have to get out of this church, or at least get their permission for these individuals to move their nightclub in here. So let's go ahead and check it out. I don't want to spend too much more time over here today. We're, it's already kind of getting into the evening time, and we want to head back towards the uh, hostel. Uh, we got to pay Gart before 2100, and then after 2100, we got to go talk to the informant in the apartments. But before we go, I want to go over to this computer one more time. Whoop. Hey, uh, Innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Liked old and little men between her fingers, remember? What? You have the headless foul rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. What? Win who back? I can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. I should, yes. This is a task of mine now. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. Sure. Um. Did it actually give me a task? Dolores Day was fine of figuring she deserves more. You should offer her any and all that you have one day if you meet her in person. What an odd task to give yourself, but here we are. Well, I wanted to agree to that because we do have the figure, and I didn't know what to do with it. All right, let's look in here. The machine's keyboard behind the hatch. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. Huh. Okay, so we gotta find. We gotta find a passcode. It did say to talk to this creepy dude over here again. Hey, dude. Do anything about the uh, computer? Oh, hey, wait. There's coffee in the back. Oh, wait. I meant the mother's love. Coffee in the back. Something familiar about that. Coffee and stale cookies. Have you by any chance heard the Vieta? Say the password to her. Vita. Say the password to her radio computer. Sorry about the pronunciation. Too many times, essay. You need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Are you right about that drama? I'm doing a survey of passwords and passcodes identifying regional trends in the interest of public safety, of course. Honestly, I just want to break into a radio computer to see what's on it. Yes, it's for a first-degree murder investigation in Martinez. That's a success, too. Maybe that'll help me? Or maybe it's just giving me a bad option to pick. I feel like I should just be honest with this dude. It's for a murder investigation. The lieutenant raises his... Don't swear, Evato. The password is afterlife death. Creepy. What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. You know, there's some speed freaks around here to call you the crab man. Un cangrejo? <laughs> Never thought of myself as a crab. More like a fling flickering among the raptors and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. Sounds like it. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? To be fair, it's really more like a spider. But everyone calls you the crab man. Ah, I get it now. I get it now. Did you carve those sculptures? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something... I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. All right, let's consider the context and meaning here. See what you've done there. It's as if these figures are trying to become one with the church or perhaps the mother herself. You've got some nice curves going there. These seem a tad derivative. You're promoting the objectification of women with your reactionary depiction of female bodies. Honestly, I don't get it. Uh, let's do the first one. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. 
All right. It don't bother me none. Crap no worse than a man. If you think about it. Okay, then. Thanks. I think we're done here, S.A. Yeah, I think we're done too. See you later. That was an interesting conversation. Correct. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Mind your business. We're breaking in. We, we hacker man now. We're Mr. Robot. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Press the play. The speaker comes to. Good afternoon. This is the East Indian. All right, let's try that again. Good. Please repeat the password. After life, death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Okay. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Yeah, what's up with Fortress accident? The company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Any other information about the company? One moment. She flips through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCS produces revolutionary interactive call in radio games. That's what the catalog says. Call in radio games. That's not bad. And what's that? This interactive call in radio game. Any other questions? Wait, what? You didn't. You're a, okay, so she didn't ask. Static drowns her response. Okay. Are you a machine or alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Well, nice to meet you, Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people in our room. Paranoid. What? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid? Yvonne, my partner here, tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. No, we're not going to do that. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the river Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. That sounds kind of sad. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for you for the first accident. No, we're finished. Goodbye. Goodbye. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Print. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Let's read it. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. And it says? Arrived at the church. The door was boarded up. So I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary. But I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. For what purpose? The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think this log may be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. All right, read second entry. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. Continue. See, even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. Read the third entry. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. Why would she need a new antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna. 
had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. So she was here with a group? But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers though, they're fucked. So she had a group of artistic, artistically inclined, artistically talented individuals with her. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup. When the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. A data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. Artist programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? Her friends, colleagues. She must be quite educated if she knew how to set up all this machinery. Agreed. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. Okay. So they're getting something set up to start working. They want to be left alone. They don't want to interfere with local politics. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. We are. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. Agreed. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment. But I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Yeah, that's the spot we walked through where uh, we started to lose the ability to hear ourselves talk and our stomp around. Is she talking about? Lieutenant looks to his right towards the silent. Let's read the seventh entry. 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. Higher she goes, would that explain why that guy is climbing up there as high as he can get? Is it absolute silence up there? Is it dimensional rift? Or something else? The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? But what could it be? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Read the eighth entry. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music. One neo-disco song over and over again. Okay. So she's trying to record the silence to find the center of it. And the disco guys are at exact odds with her. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. Continue. That disco man must be a cell. Yes. A girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. Read the ninth entry. March 51, a new two meter aux cable. Noodles, crackers, ping pong energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. Um, sir, that doesn't say ping pong, that says ping ping. You're interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. 
Okay, is that her? The strange one. Make straight for the radio computer. Okay. Suna, the programmer. She's the one dressed like a grandma, right? She's probably not going to be happy we're reading her logs. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds. The machine reboots. Yes, you are breaking in, but not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit bender. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. I can assure you I'm an expert circuit bender. I'm not breaking into your computer. I'm using it to access coalition military data links. That's just an outright lie. Uh, that was a... Man, we just barely passed that. I kind of want to use it just because that option probably isn't available too often. We're here on the side case representing certain, <laughs> representing certain music venue organizers. I'm... Oh man. Let's try it. There are no coalition military data links. And even if there was, you couldn't access them over a civilian network. Yes, I could. I'm a cybernetic god. I'm using your realm perfect to com commandeer coalition warship archer. I will turn its cannons against its masters. You're right. I'm just a drunk cop. I don't know how to do anything interesting with radio computers. No one asked you to do anything interesting with my radio computer. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whir back to now life. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her after she has rebooted the machine. All right. Is it is it rebooted? What is it? Woman still hunched over by the keyboard, gently illuminated by the purring light. Uh, who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Impressive. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. I believe it. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. How do you feel about anodic dance music? What? I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. No, we we know she's heard it. What are you, 40? It's the future of dance music. Have you ever listened to it? Like, actually listened? Yeah. Like, all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying, do they? She pulls a face that looks like, that looks absolutely scathing. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rug whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but how do you feel about a club for anodic dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. I've got news for you. I've convinced them to actually build a clean nightclub. Take a guess, why don't you? I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for anodic dance music. They said it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up and coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Already did. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. What's up with the crab man? No. Yes. Sounds like you're not worried about him? No. You're right. I'm not. Uh, why are there so many machines here? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. What about these bowls of water? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Why do you need an antenna? I use the AR-1 as my RAIN prefix processing unit. And that's your radio computer, right? Mm-hmm. And the antenna, it's processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? No, I'm a master circuit bender. I know everything. I don't really know much about anything, to be honest. All right. Well... All radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, 
You need to invest in a good antenna. In the air one? Is it a good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. What are you doing with your computer? I'm working. On what? Could you... Could you just... Shh... For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. Isn't your rim perfect radio computer made exclusively for the government use? So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. And you work for the government? No, I don't. So why do you have it? Because I needed something good for my investigation and Rain Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. Okay. Besides, owning a Rain Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Rain Prefects in every police department, for example. How'd you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used freelance for the coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Rain Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Rain Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. All right, I'll try not to touch anything. Next question. Great. What are you doing in this church? You really like those questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Okay. The location of a two millimeter hole in the world. This is this is pretty big right here. This is bigger than just about anything else that we've we've experienced. Wait, what? Yeah. She's looking for a disruption in the radio wave. That's what her personal log said. Yeah, but I think she's actually looking for a hole in the world. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is that connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world? What exactly does that mean? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. There's something frantic about her as she locks her gaze with you, eyes shining like pearls. Clearly this is very important. It's super important to her. She's got kind of like a, a Doc, Doc Brown kind of uh, visage to her here. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for you to answer. All right, well, my personal answer would be to measure the something around it in order to gauge the nothing. Easy. You measure it by the world around it. <laughs> I promise. I promise I haven't played this before. I promise you I haven't spoiled it by watching anybody else play it. I have started watching another playthrough of the very, very beginning of the game just because I was so curious as to what some of the other options could have been, but that's after I've been recording this. So this is 100% blind, 100% spoiled free. Uh, easy, you measure it by the world around it. So logic, me and logic are boys here. All right, hold on a moment. Does it mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it? We might not even be living in reality. You measure it by collecting Data on its surroundings, on that which exists. Yeah, I agree. Can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measurement. I don't know. I'm not here for some science. I just want to solve a murder. No, my, my character is very smart. So you measure it by collecting data on its surroundings. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Huh. Hydro transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. Well, yeah, I didn't... 
I kind of knew that. I didn't think we needed that explained, but okay. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. She grows silent, staring at her circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ritual. Do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. That's probably why there's not much light up there. Uh, and we're having difficulty seeing the crazy man that's climbing up there. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. There's also a crab man, because Spider-Man is already taken. I know. You don't think crab man might somehow be responsible here? No, I don't. Alright, let's talk some more. You said that the research isn't going well, why not? Because it's just trial and error. Trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. Okay. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's all I want to know about the scary 2mm hole in the world for now. Great. Thanks. I'll let you work in peace. 2mm hole in the world. Alright. This got very metaphysical. This could be a simulation, and that could be some type of entry point. Could be dimensional based, multiverse, could be time travel, or it could be actual spiritual. Alright, we're supposed to talk to these guys one more time. Alright, let's talk to you. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? He looks excited. The tips of his hair are sharp and white. The bleach has consumed almost all of the toothbrush on the mirror in front of him. I'm here to talk about the church again. Yes? What's the deal? I was using the mainframe when Suno, the former lead programmer of the Fortress accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Yeah, she didn't like the idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? I don't know yet. Unity! Dance! She made it very clear she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I want it, Victor. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. I love Egghead. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not, really truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what she just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. I'm sorry, Egghead. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. That's it for now. Goodbye, officer. Alright, so is the task to go talk to her again? Let's see what the journal says. Journal says... Convince Suna to cooperate with the Ravers or a victor. Alright, let's go in there one more time. Let's look at this. Painted with pastel, someone is trying to bring cheer into the world. Alright, hopefully we can go talk to Suna real quick, and then we need to get back to the hostile area. 
not hostile, hostile. Revachol, Oranier, Clagier. All right, and we're going to talk to her next episode. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please consider a like, a comment, and or a subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.